Hey there, it's Girish. If you are a regular listener to the Mission Shunya podcast and enjoy the stories that I am bringing to you, then please do give a rating or write a review on Apple Podcast or any platform of your choice. It helps in spreading the word and getting more listeners to the show. Thanks. Before we dive into this week's story, I want to share my experience of interacting with industries from the region of Tamil Nadu in India. This Indian state has added wind power projects at a rapid scale in early 2000s and a major contributing factor is awareness among the businessmen in the region. Just a small narration of the benefits of adding solar or wind projects would be enough for them to buy in as long as it was economical. After the clean energy run, this region is adopting other practices like energy efficiency and sustainability. So my guest for this week is Hi I'm Kadir co-founder of EcoHike and I'm proud entrepreneur of sustainability and I'm uh, starting this journey to make this world a sustainable place and a happy place to live for everyone So what is Kadir's background and how did he get into textile manufacturing Okay actually uh, I'm based out of Tirupur born and brought up in Tirupur which is near uh, Coimbatore and also uh, hub of textile industries So this uh, company Syndicate Impex we founded in 2006 I did my college in PhD tech in fashion designing so after my college in 2004 I was in training for 2 years and by 2006 myself and my friend who did our college together we started this company called Syndicate Impex we started with 10 machine capacity and right now after 13 years we are running with 350 machine capacity and uh, this is what is our journey about and we have uh, 100% of our manufacturing is into export oriented and uh, we were more mainly doing for european brands that's a good short background about your work kadir the reason i got you on the podcast is because of the new range of clothing that you have come up with the sustainable clothing range how did this idea come about to a person who has been traditionally focusing on export market when did this start to say about our journey on sustainability it all started in 2018 last year uh, beginning when we thought of uh, going for an auditing called green co which is a sustainability auditing uh, done by confederation of indian industries so during that process of auditing it is more about evaluating all our energy resources and all our uh, natural resources that we are consuming for making and uh, producing our garments so during that uh, auditing process it gives us lot of insight about what all the resource and how much we are uh, consuming and wo- how we are uh, exploiting the natural resources without knowing ourselves so can you just believe for making one t-shirt in cotton it consumes around 2700 liters of water that's a staggering number yeah yeah of course and uh, we were really very shocked to hear about these numbers and uh, also there are a lot of other data like how how much of co2 emission and how much of waste that we are creating and how much of landfill that we are generating every year even though this is a hub of uh, zero liquid discharge where 100% of the dyed water is been recycled and it is been purified but still we really have to uh, figure out like how much energy resource that we are consuming and uh, we thought of uh, coming up with our uh, with a brand called eco hike which is made of uh, which has to be made of sustainability that is our core agenda uh, so we th- we experimented with lot of uh, r&ds and uh, finally we were uh, able to launch this brand eco hike in june 2019 that is 6 months back in green co summit in new delhi that's a wonderful initiative you did mention about the audit that you underwent last year so what is this audit and uh, can you give us a brief history about the audit what does they focus on okay sure this is like an, uh, we our company itself is uh, we have done lot of auditings for international brands uh, that is that in all the auditings that we have done so far they used to focus on particular area and for particular uh, Uh, in uh, compliances say for example it, uh, some audit will be mainly focused on product oriented that will be like cocotex or goth standards 
and some will be focused on more about ethical auditing where they focus more about uh, the labor welfare and uh, uh, their awareness and uh, the safety measures but whereas in green co it is a combination of all the auditings and uh, also about all the it is not about auditing i should say it is more about uh, insight and also evaluating ourselves so during this process we were uh, quantifying the data as like how much water that we are consuming say for example in our garment factory so for domestic usage we consumed 230 liters of water per capita before uh, the auditing so that includes uh, for uh, their toilet toilet and they for bathing in hostel and for canteen and uh, for all the usage so the global benchmark is sorry indian benchmark is around 160 liters whereas the global benchmark is 60 liters per uh, human consumption per day water so after we came to know that we are consuming around 2000 i mean 230 liters of water so we decided how to reduce the water and right now we were at uh, consuming 93 to 98 liters of water per day we created awareness among uh, employees and uh, we created some sessions like how we are consuming and what are all the areas where we can address and uh, all the employees they themselves were very cooperative and they also want to uh, contribute with their own ideas and that was that gave us a lot of scope and lot of process about consuming water and it's not about only water when it comes to energy that is uh, the current consumption and uh, how much of electricity that we are consuming uh we came to know that uh, a particular machine alone consumes 40% of our total energy consumption so we ju- the, that is the air compressor so we started to go for some uh, minor changes on and we uh, started to monitor the air leakage and we changed our uh, tube lights to led lights and also for induction lighting those and also the machines which we are using for sewing machines all the 350 machines in our factory is direct drive motors which was been replaced by clutch motors which consumes around 20 to 30% more energy when compared to uh, the direct drive motors which we are running now so all these things we are able to uh, identify and this all came only through the green co auditing and we uh, we have fixed targets by ourselves we created a team team called green co team where we have uh, engaged we, are, we didn't engage the manager or the top level management but it is more about uh, the floor level managers and the guys and the uh, employees who were uh, uh, tailors and workers so the electricians the mechanics the ao even some of the floor ma- floor level uh, people the housekeeping people they are they all contributed and they all come up with their own ideas and we are very happy to know that uh, they are very interested in contributing towards this green uh, saving program so it helps us a lot and now we are we are able to save a lot because of our green initiative and that is what is journey about and we are a lot long we are long way to go for making and zero waste company at this point i would like to highlight that an entrepreneur couldn't ask for more especially when every single member of your team embraces your ideas and want to contribute to it in their own right so was a green co audit an eye opener for kadir and his team yes and uh, during this journey actually uh, when i say about this green co we came to know like uh, even though we were able to save lot of resources in uh, inside our factory but when in a t-shirt the amount of saving that is done during the manufacturing process is very less when compared to the manufacturing i mean during the savings that we are able to uh, create during the growing of cotton and uh, manufacturing of polyester and uh, so what we have decided is we have to change make some changes in the product profile itself so that the energy savings and the amount of water savings can be much better and that can be much more benefited so we thought of we took, took some data of how much water that we are consuming uh, currently so we started to take analysis and take data about uh, how much of uh, water that is consumed during harvesting of cotton it was very shocking and it was very interesting to know that uh, for growing 1 kg of cotton it requires 10000 liters of water we were it is really unimaginable and uh, all the hard works and all the water that is consumed and now after end of the day when we are making it in a garment and that is uh, been used in a very short lifespan and again it is going to landfill 
it's not about the money but about the energy resource and uh, the natural uh, resource that we have exploited when we are uh, running behind the fast fashion made us to uh, realize lot of insights and we gave us lot of uh, ideas about what mistakes that we are doing so we decided to come up with a brand called eco hike where we decided to go uh, not to use the natural resource and try to minimize the impact and we we we, we aim in a very simple way so our first aim is not to go for the natural resource and it has to be a recycled one and sustainability can never be achieved unless it is affordable and durable and obviously comfortable so there are lot of brands in uh, across the world and also uh, now lot of brands in uh, india that are coming up with the name sustainability but uh, they i believe unfortunately it is been priced at a much much higher way and also the the quality and uh, the durability is also been not been taken much care so we decided like it has to be more durable and it has to be not just by words and we have to uh, have all the authenticated data about how much savings that we are making and how durable it is and uh, how much it is affordable and it has to reach out to the, all the consumer uh, consumers across uh, the floor level and uh, all the people and we came up with the final product making a t-shirts with uh, recycling the plastic pet bottles so previously we tried with uh, uh, cotton textile waste and other uh, blends but unfortunately the t-shirts made with uh, recycling the cotton textile waste is not more durable and even after two or three washes the quality of the garment is not wearable and uh, even the comfort of the uh, garment is very much compromised so we thought we should not do it for name sake or just for marketing and it has to be durable and we came up with uh, going for 100% polyester where it can be very durable when compared to the cotton t-shirts and also we added antimicrobial and anti odor finish to it so that it will it, it will absorb and uh, it will have very comfortable property and even if it is wetting it will not retain in the body and it absorbs so, so that the moisture wicking is very high and air breathability is very good these are all the performance activities i mean performance criteria that makes a garment very comfortable to wear for the whole day at any any situation at any weather condition so you recycle plastic bottles to make the t-shirt but the other aspect of it is also to ensure that you don't uh, dye the material because that again is resource intensive correct yes yes exactly so what we have tried to do is our main vision mission is to produce the world's least co2 footprint garment so the, when we when we speak about the co2 footprint it all it is all about how much energy that we are uh, consuming and how can we reduce it so when we are addressing all these points there are areas uh, gray areas where we uh, want to highlight like even though we are uh, as i said tirupur is 100% uh, zero liquid discharge and we are recycling the whole water that we are using for dyeing facility uh, that recycling process and the dyeing process itself involves lot of energy consumption and it it knows lot of process to be done so we thought this color has to be it is not a very mandatory thing and basically as an indian and we we know uh, when we look into our old history white was the major garment that we all uh, everyone uh, uses and uh, that is how we are been uh, traditionally been following so we thought like uh, going without bleaching and even uh, bleaching consumes lot of energy so we don't want to uh, bleach the garment or dye the garment and we came it as a, we gave we kept it as a neutral garment where it looks like an uh, off white color so that the energy consumption is less so that is our main mission mission and we are sticking to it so far and uh, we are uh, we don't say that we are not going to dye the garment if we find a technology where we can uh, consume less energy and uh, add the dye uh, add the dye uh, dye colors without polluting the natural resource sure we are open to it there is already a process called dope dyeing we are uh, which we are already uh, looking into and that will be our next phase of a phase of launching it's it's really in good good intentions to have this also taken into consideration so getting the plastic bottles and raw materials is one challenge and of course dealing with the complexity of whether to dye or not to dye is other challenge are there any other challenges that you have come across in creating this brand of clothing uh yes actually uh, when when we speak about recycling unfortunately uh, when we take it to the consumer level so the first question that they ask is uh, how can we wear a plastic uh, plastic t-shirt true that is the very first question and how much it is skin friendly and how can we wear it on a body and will not will not harm our skins 
but uh, we have to understand that is pet is nothing but a pre form of polyester so we are uh, just converting the polyester uh, pet into polyester and then we are making the garment so uh, it is 100% similar to the product of uh, any sportswear brand that is available in the market uh, when you go to the any international brands or any indian brands since you buy a sportswear t-shirt it is uh, 95% is made into made out of polyester which is nothing but the same fabric we have the same same yarn which we are using the only thing is that we are recycling from the waste of pet and we are converting into polyester and then we are consuming it as a making it as a garment so do you think public perception of clothing has to change and this is a major challenge in adoption of such range of clothing i don't uh, say that public is uh, the perception has to change but uh, here i just have a small different in opinion like public is always ready to adapt when it is good for the environment and also for their uh, own use but the only thing is that they are not well aware and the consumer education has not been done in a uh, justifiable way and we have to change that uh, consumer and we have to change that perception and we have to educate the consumer saying that this garment is 100% safe and also it's very durable and it is uh, very comfortable and it is a very at a very affordable way and of course it is possible to make now considering t-shirt has this kind of perception among the public people who want to wear it are you now planning to focus on other range of clothing that you think people would be more easy to adopt what are the line of products that you are planning to launch in 2020 and beyond so far we have a product range of crew neck t-shirt that is round neck t-shirts which is used for uh, jogging or other sports activities and also uh, collared t-shirts which can be focused mainly on corporate uh, uniforms also and last week we launched a very innovative product uh, for napkins that is nothing but a handkerchief so that has a very good water absorbency and that has a very uh, high sustainable values and our main intention is to uh, ask the consumer not to you go for reusable i mean tissue papers and start using the reusable napkins so for that what we have done is so in every t-shirt that we are uh, sending to the customers we have to wrap it with a napkin and we give them an opportunity to use the napkin and say no to the tissue papers which will save a lot and contribute a lot towards the environmental benefits so that we have started this uh, year and going forward we are coming up with a line of uh, products for uh, sportswear uh, track pants and uh, uh, even for uh, home textiles so it's like the 2020 we have a lot of, i mean lot of exciting year and we are looking forward to launch few more products uh, down the line the t-shirts i must admit are really cool i have tried them and they are very comfortable it's hard to identify the source of materials unless you see the small tag which is made of recycled paper which provides details about the product manufacturing and its benefits so with t-shirts and the new range of offerings who is their main target customers uh, we are right now we are mainly focusing on uh, corporate t-shirts and also for corporate wears so where uh, we will not be just as a t-shirt vendor or a merchant supplier to any of the corporates so what we are trying to do is uh, along with the t-shirts we used to have an session of awareness session about sustainability and we used to uh, initiate some concepts like uh, green friday and uh, other initiatives like consumer is god and what is the difference between earth versus world so in all these initiatives we are trying to improve the consumer awareness about sustainability and uh, asking them to practice in the day to day activities of what they are doing without changing any i mean without making any big effort just by making a small change in their purchase policy can give a tremendous impact to the towards the environment so our main belief is every human being born in this world is a consumer invariable of uh, who or it may be uh, or whatever it may be so as a consumer we have the power to both create and also to destroy so when we are trying to create uh, consume something in a responsible way and using and recycling it in a responsible way of course we are creating and we are uh, the god, we have the god in ourselves and we are when we are trying to do it in the other way without uh, realizing the impact since the, just because we have money then obviously we are uh, not doing any justice for the next generation to come and we are already facing the consequence started to face the consequences and high time we need to realize and we have to come up with a uh, collective measures and as an uh, individuals we can create a very uh, very big impact when we are uh, realizing our true potential of as a consumer that is very well put kadar 
I clearly appreciate your values that you bring to the table, not just from the consumer point of view, but the overall ecosystem point of view. Not everyone, not every business would try to do this, go beyond their value proposition and try to spread awareness in, in the general sense as well. So that's a wonderful initiative that you're bringing to the table. Before I let you go, I want to ask you about the the overall ecosystem in Tirupur and the textile industry in general, considering that you've been in the space for a long time. And you did mention about that is a zero waste discharge Tirupur region. But what are the other sustainability aspects that the textile manufacturing cluster in Tirupur adopts? Because we do hear about international clusters in other countries that are, uh, say, a circular economy and other zero waste and everything else in the global standards. But what is different and what is happening in Tirupur in terms of sustainability? Yeah, true. Actually, uh, when I want to speak about the cluster, I could say that this is the best cluster in the whole of the world for a sustainable manufacturing destination. Because here, uh, when we speak about uh, zero water discharge, the amount of water consumption is almost zero because we are recycling the water and we are not polluting the wa- polluting the land or any riverbed. So the dying process, it is 100% has been ZLD. It has been done for the past 11 years and we are the first of its kind in the whole world. And even till date, there is no any c- cluster who has been zero liquid discharge and who has been practicing ZLD. This is one thing. And uh, when I come to uh, speak about the renewable energy, the, as a Tirupur cluster, we are consuming the wind energy, which is, we have uh, installed wind capacity, which is more than what we are consuming. So we are already carbon neutral and uh, the 100% of the energy that has been consumed by the Tirupur cluster is through wind energy. That is something very important thing which we I have to highlight. And Tirupur as a cluster, we have planted around 6,50,000 trees in the past five years. And we are uh, happy to say that we have uh, restored the waterbed, which has been, uh, it's been restored because of the tree plantation that has happened in the past five, five, uh, six years time down the line. So these are all very proud things which I have to address when I speak about the Tirupur cluster which makes it a very unique and and a very uh, favorable destination for when we speak about the sustainability. And I'm happy to be a part of it. That's really wonderful, Kadir. Thanks, thanks for taking time and sharing your views, not just about your product, but also about the manufacturing cluster in Tirupur and all the sustainability practices that goes into it. I really appreciate the work that you're doing. And uh, I hope through this medium, a lot of, lot of people around the world can know more about your work and also about the manufacturing cluster in Tirupur and get in touch with you. I am also happy to say that I, I didn't get a sample of the Eco Height t-shirt and uh, I really felt good wearing the t-shirt. I'll just promote it to a lot more people. Thanks for taking time and thanks for sharing your views on the podcast. Thank you so much, Girish, for giving us this opportunity and much more to come as a sustainability. It is a responsibility of every individuals to come up with our own initiatives. And uh, I think as Eco Height, we are trying to do some justice and uh, next year we are trying to come up with circular economy program also which will make more, uh, which will add more value and justice to sustainability. Thank you so much for giving this opportunity. Thank you. Before I wrap up the interview, adding another part of the chat with Kadir, because between the time when we recorded the interview to now, EcoHike has indeed come up with a circular economy program that he mentions and has also planned for implementing the sustainable development goals, the SDGs. When we speak about the SDGs, I'm very happy and proud to say that EcoHike address around eight SDGs of all the 17 SDG goals by uh, UNDP, United Nations Development Program. So when we speak about the product, we will be saving around 2,600 liters in every t-shirt that we are making. So we will be saving around 2,700 liters of water when compared to the normal t-shirt that is available in the market. 12 pet bottles is used to recycle the product and 70% of less greenhouse gas emission, that is CO2 emission when compared to the other product that has been manufactured and 250 gram, uh, gram, uh, grams of landfill has been saved. So these are all the sustainable aspects that we have addressed. And apart from all the sustainability, we have never compromised anything on performance wear. So it is highly anti-odor and antimicrobial finish. And it is very comfortable to wear and very skin friendly. And air breathability and moisture absorbency will be uh, very good in this garment. So you will not feel the sweat in your body and it will be emitted outside immediately. And the whole day you will feel better and comfortable and you can feel proud about wearing and 
the amount of uh, sustainable sustainable aspects that is the the garment and to add more value to this garment we also have embedded the tag the hand tag which we have made in this garment it's made of cotton textile waste and we have embedded organic seeds inside this tag so even when you throw the ta- hand tag in the soil and when it is when it is been watered and leave it in the sunlight we will have organic seeds we have embedded chili and brinjal seeds to it so we also give some opportunity to create our own oxygen space for our lungs and that brings to end yet another amazing story from a sustainability enthusiast and entrepreneur to know more about kadir or eco hike visit ecohike.in that is e c o h i k e.in and moving on to this week's action item towards mission chunia drawing from the story of eco hike i would like to challenge you to look at your activities do something like an audit of your everyday activities measure them and act on it it could be something similar to what eco hike team did in their factory look at your monthly water consumption electricity consumption and challenge yourself to reduce your consumption of water or electricity in a small way to find inspiration you can listen to stories featured on the mission shunya podcast there have been many stories that are covered so far and each story is an inspiring one in its own right and talking of stories if you have a story to share or know someone whose activities align with the theme of mission shunya do let me know you can write to me at missionshunya@gmail.com or you can tag me on a story on instagram facebook twitter go by the handle at @missionchunia i always believe inspiring stories will influence people like you and me in having a positive impact in our daily lives the podcast is available on all major platforms for apple and android devices like apple podcast google spotify gana jio seven and many more you can also find the podcast archives on missionchunia.com and more regular updates are available on the social media channels of mission chunia again go by the handle at mission chunia so until next time signing off this is mission chunia towards a zero carbon economy mission chunia